Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Remington. This is the 1875 Outlaw. Now this one is chambered in 45 Colt and I got a box of Winchester 45 Colt 255 grain round nose here. So we're going to get these things out and take a couple shots with it at the range. But one of the things I wanted to point out about the 1875 Outlaw is in the Colt firearms, when you go from say 1851, 1860, there's a big change between those and the 1873. With the 1875 Outlaw, this is a cartridge gun, but it really didn't change a whole lot from 1858. Now, this is not, the model is not 1858. This is the new model army, but it was patented in 1858, I believe is what the story is with that. Uh, this is a Pieta, and it is a black powder firearm. So, you know, you got a round balls, powder, percussion caps, all that good stuff. But the similarities between the two, they still kept the... Uh, the big sail underneath there, kind of uh, where the loading arm was on the black powder one. Uh, still the pretty much the same model, except this one's got a round barrel on it and the uh, black powder version has a uh, octagon barrel on it. Uh, a, lot, a lot of similarities between this and the 1873 Colts. It's just that those got a, uh, a better reputation, I guess. There were more of those sold because they come out a couple of years before the 1875. Um, one of the things that they did do on this is, of course, it's the board through cylinder, so it's a cartridge gun. They did put a loading arm on there. So similar to the 1873s, you pull it back to the half cock and you rotate your cylinder and hit your eject ejector rod. It's a pretty long ejector rod. Now this is a seven and a half inch barrel. They did make it in, I think, a five and a half inch barrel. But uh, this one should be plenty accurate, that's for sure. Uh, to take this thing apart to clean, it's real similar to the 1873s. There's the base pin retention pin right there. You'll push that in and get underneath the front there and there's your base pin there. And it's a big old long base pin because it goes from the end there all the way down through the cylinder. And then you just make sure it's all the way out. You should be able to roll your cylinder right on out of there, just like you can on the 1873. Six rounds, we're gonna go ahead and put six rounds in it because this is a more modern one and it does have modern feature on it. It has a, um, a safety on it, uh, so you can carry if I can get this thing lined back up again, you can carry um, six rounds in there. There we go. We got that put back in. Um, there's a little piece right here at the back of the hammer, underneath the firing pin on the hammer, and that is kind of a safety. Now, if you let the hammer all the way down, of course, the firing pin is going to be sticking through there, but if you pull it back to that first click, and then it won't push forward anymore. That little safety is a feature that you birdie added to these. Um, it was not there on the originals. Um, again, it's it's a single action army, I guess you'd say. It's a single action revolver anyways. There are four clicks on it. Of course, that was Colt's thing, C-O-L-T. Uh, be kind of hard to spell out Remington on this. That'd be a lot of clicks. Anyways, let's get this thing out to the range. We'll get it loaded up and give it a few shots. All right, we're out here at the saloon with the uh, 1875 Remington Outlaw. And I've got one of these little targets set up there at seven yards, so it'll be 10 yards because we're gonna do it from the uh, Caldwell uh, matrix. And we're gonna take a few shots and see how accurate it is. And then I've got one of the silhouette targets up there too. We'll give it a try. Now to load it, it's just like your regular old single action army. Pull it back to half cock. That frees up the cylinder so it'll rotate. Open up your loading gate and then drop your rounds right down in there. And like I said, these are 255 grain. These are Winchester lead round nose. So they're uh, a target round. And we are gonna load six of them in there. Close it. You gotta let the hammer down, let it all the way down gently. You can pull it back to that first notch and then that firing pin's not resting on the uh, the end of the uh, round there. All right, definitely gonna put some ear plugs in with this thing because in the saloon it's gonna be pretty loud. So let's go ahead and give it a couple accuracy shots. This will be 10 yards at the little round target. All 
All right, there was six shots. Uh, it's a pretty good grouping on there anyways. Uh, a little low and to the left. Guess whose uh, fault that is, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, unloading it. Let's see. Nope. A couple of them just shook right out of there, which is the way I like them to fall out. But uh, other than that, it didn't take any effort to get them out of there. Let's go up there and take a look at that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's pretty good grouping right there from 10 yards away. The side, the front, front blade side on it is really thin, but line the top of that up with the, uh, the notch that's cut in the top of the receiver on the, the top strap on there. And it's pretty darn good if you ask me. The front side could probably be just a tad lower and it would be just about dead on on elevation. But like I said, with the, the top of the front blade, even with the top of the rear notch in the receiver, that's where it hit at. That's pretty good. I got a silhouette target set up over here behind me. Let's take some shots at that from seven yards. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and load up six more rounds in here. Let the hammer down, pull it back just a little bit there and make sure it's, uh, it's in the safety notch there. Now, sadly, I do not have a holster for this gun. I did make a fringed holster, a uh, right-hand cross draw, but it's for an 1858 Remington. And since this is basically an 1858 Remington, you'd think it fit, but that little handle on the ejector right there just prevents it from going in there far enough. So it looks like I may have to make another holster. Anyways, we're gonna take three shots center mass on them and see what it does two-handed. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. Let's try some one-handed headshots on him. It's a pretty good shooting gun. It really is. It's pretty easy to manage. Now, normally I shoot, um, I think they're 200 grain cowboy loads and uh, they're a little lighter, a little less recoil. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference between the uh, 200 and 250s or 225s or whatever these were, but uh, it's still easy to manage one-handed. Uh, it's got quite a bit of heft to it, quite a bit of weight. That long barrel helps keep that muzzle rise to a minimum anyways. Pretty good shooting gun. Let's take a couple more shots. All right, now this is probably not a gun you want to fan, um, but we'll see if we can't do a little hammer flicking on it uh, just with the one thumb and see how that does. I think I missed one there somewhere. Yes, I did. I think it's gonna be this one right here. Nope, maybe one more. One of the things I did notice in it when I was doing that kind of rapidly like that is your hand tends to want to ride up on the grip a little bit there till your pinky's right at the bottom. And at that point, it's a little tougher to hold on to. It uh, just kind of rolls upward in your hand there. All right, you know what? I got two rounds left here. It was only a box of 20. So there's a steel target up there I haven't shot yet. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. One-handed steel target. Yeah, shit's pretty good. Like I said, it still tends to roll up in your hand a little bit. Not much you can do about that other than maybe increase the grip strength a little bit, but uh, I don't know how much rapid firing you're going to be doing with it anyways. All right, there it is, guys, the 1875 Remington Outlaw. This is by Cimarron. It's manufactured by Uberti. Cimarron imports them into the United States, and Cimarron specializes in a lot of Old West cowboy guns, and they're some of my favorite guns because they're made out of metal and wood. No polymer. Any gun that was made before polymer, I think is better looking. Not necessarily a better gun. Polymer is a good material for firearms. It's just these things look so classy. Nice wood grain on and everything. Nice uh, color case hardened charcoal, color case hardened frame on this thing. Blued barrel, blued cylinder. Six shot, 45 Colt revolver, and just a good looking gun.
really is. It does have a safety feature on it, so you can pull it back to that first notch. It is an upgrade from Uberti. Uberti has done that to make these. There might have been some importation laws uh, that went into effect, but um, they made it happen so that these could be brought in the United States. Really good looking guns, really good shooting gun. Like I said, the only thing I didn't like about it is how it would ride up in my hand doing the rapid firing. Not a problem if you're just gonna, you know, do one at a time like you should be doing. You know, I don't think there's gonna be too many uh, single action shootouts these days. It's still, a, you could use this for personal protection if you want, but um, there are better options for that. Just not better looking options, I don't think. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. If you could reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos, and then hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for checking out Cimarron's 1875 Remington Outlaw with me.